is Speak Life Kenya. Well now, you may have heard of economic turmoils, political instabilities, and currently the COVID-19. As a result, there have been so many things that have been happening all over the world. Statistics tells us that over 26 million people have lost their jobs as a result of this pandemic. Back here at home, we are having over 1 million people that are being laid off, that are being retrenched, that have lost their jobs as a result of this pandemic and today we are privileged to have an exceptional person who is a pastor who is a mentor who is a father and a husband and he's going to take us through the process of job loss and how he overcame it welcome My name is Patrick Simiu. I'm the director and CEO of uh, PAN, that is P-A-N, but Sim Advisory Networks Limited, which is a consultancy firm. And uh, at PAN, we do corporate trainings. We do uh, team building for organizational staff. We do uh, transformational talks. We do professional counseling as well. We've got, um, I've got a couple of uh, psychologists that I work with at my office and professional counselors as well. So whenever we are not going out to do all these things I've mentioned, um, uh, like for example right now, there's very little to do with consultancy because of the pandemic that we face. So most of the time we are at our office uh, doing counseling. So um, uh, I first studied chemical engineering Yes, that is, that is one thing that so many people have never gotten to know. I did chemical engineering, I worked for CPC, that is Corn Products Company, in the production department for eight years, until the year 2012, when uh, CPC was completely shut down through a process uh, referred to as redundancy. And so all of us um, were, you know, were rendered jobless at once. So um, Patrick Simeo is, uh, one person that has had a very serious job loss experience and that is not the only time i lost job because after that of course there was um, uh, uh, a period of looking for a job tamaking you know hustling here and there then after a couple of months i think a year or so i got another job which was a far much better job but i think i'll come to that later i'll come to that later all i wanted to say in my introductory remarks that um, I've had a job loss experience and uh, I'm grateful to God that the pain of the job loss brought about every pain, every gain, sorry, the pain brought about the gain that I seem to be enjoying today in what I'm doing. I'm a husband to Sophie, Sophie Smeal, and uh, between us we are blessed with one son, Ryan. Thank you. Oh my, uh, truth be told, I never saw it coming. I wasn't ready for it. I was not prepared for it. And uh, yeah, in, not just me, but so many of my colleagues as well, we were not ready for it. So I think I'll be, to be precise, I didn't see it coming, yes. Wow. Um, I think I was about four years in marriage and guess what, my wife was heavily pregnant and um, a couple of weeks before I'd asked her to resign. So Sophie had just resigned from her job and I uh, actually told her um, you, you don't have to struggle much considering that uh, we are expecting and I thought that uh, I was in a position to pay her whatever she was being paid wherever she had been employed. Little did I know that a couple of weeks after her resignation, I'll be losing my job. So um, this hit me, the job loss that is, it hit me at a very critical point. Being a family man, considering that we're expecting, actually my wife was going to be due 
in a couple of weeks time because she was eight months pregnant and that was our firstborn that was our firstborn so it 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 happened at a very difficult time well thank you for that question because um every time i talk about my job loss experience one of the greatest things that um that uh, I would always want to point out is that a job experience has always provided an opportunity for one to discover themselves. Because uh, we've got so many you know, square pegs in round holes, there are, not, there are many people in employment probably who are never even meant to be in employment at the first place. So when it hits, we begin to seriously reflect on ourselves. We begin to think about our reason of existence. We begin to think very seriously about uh, what God expects of us as far as um, our life on earth is concerned. And so the job loss experience, um, I mean, to me, it, it, it was a moment of self-discovery because most of the time when I'll sit down, I'll be asking myself, is this all? I mean, for, for how long am I supposed to be mourning over my job loss? And, and, and I would ask myself questions like, was this all that God brought me on earth to be? And so out of that, I, begin to, I began to have a very clear understanding of what God expects of me. So I began to, to realize that there are, let me, let me call it, you know, um, uh, diamonds. I discovered diamonds in myself. I discovered a gold mine in myself and I thought being laid off then gives me an opportunity to begin getting the gold out of my gold mine so it was a beautiful journey say the discovery process is not an easy one as such and um, let me also quickly point out that discovery is recovery at the end of the discovery process, what comes out is a product called the exact you. I mean, a product, it, it brings out the you that God intended to be. And uh, getting there, uh, 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 my friend, is not that easy because, for instance, for me, I think I tried so many things. The first thing I did because you know when when you are when you are gasping for air to breathe joy all that you need at that time is oxygen so you wouldn't be asking for pizzas and 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 uh, hamburgers and uh, yes and kfc chicken when you are gasping for air to breathe so what you are actually looking for is survival so because of survival i i i laid my hands on anything that would give me a coin for the sake of taking care of my family. Uh, Joyce, I, I mean, Joy, I'm sure you, you'll be shocked to know that I even tried to be a taxi driver in this town because I had a car then and I thought, because the first question I was asking myself was like, what do I have? What are the things that I have that I could probably use to generate whatever level of income for the family? And so, you know, I would, I mean, I became a taxi driver, you know, with my own car. And uh, I remember this was around the elections. You remember the 2013 elections. And one of our greatest friends, uh, uh, Ruben Kigame, was, uh, you know, he was actually going for the gubernatorial uh, position of uh, the Vuiga County. And guess what? I got into his campaign team as a driver as well, yes. So uh, apart from that, I did many other things um, within the neighborhood. I'll, and that is how I started my mentorship programs as well, because I'll, 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 you know, I'll call young people from my neighborhood to come to my house and just listen to counsel. I'll be talking to them, advising them about life. But I'll be doing it, I was doing that for free. But one evening, after doing that for several weeks, I asked myself, what about placing a charge 
on these small talks I do from the house. I know it started with 100 shillings. I remember sending messages to their parents and I was telling their parents, I think uh, the kind of talks, and you may have seen, that the talks I'm giving your children are really transforming them, helping them to stabilize it in the place of character. And I was asking parents, do you just want to have this for free? And so I started charging them small fee, you know, many things I did. Apart from that, uh, what else did I do? What else did I do? Well, I, I tried some farming. I have a small piece of farm at home. It never worked. Yes. But uh, finally, I found my footing. So all I'm trying to say is that when such a thing happens, the number one thing that everyone is thinking about is survival. And when you are thinking about survival, then you should be ready to do anything so that you survive. But as you're doing those many things around you to survive, a time comes when you begin to narrow down to specifics. And that is where the aspect of, you know, your specific placement in God's grand master plan comes in. That is where the whole idea of purpose comes in. That is when you begin thinking about your talents. You begin thinking about your natural abilities. You begin thinking about your calling on earth. Yes. Thank you. Uh, of course, it's not easy joy because you see, for one, uh, you, you are getting into something that you may have probably never done. It is a new venture. You're still trying to look for even information about it on how to go about and how to perfect your skills in the new venture but at the same time you're not a brand and probably you, you're getting yourself into a very competitive field uh, and so uh, it, it really takes time because now pitching your tent in the marketplace is, is a tall order is really a tall order for me um, I remember starting with just talking to people that know me you know I'll call a friend and I'll be like, hey, by the way, you have this son who is in Form 1. Are you aware that I can be able to help them? Uh, uh, I can be able to be sharing with them a few nuggets that will help them sharpen themselves in the place of academic excellence. You know, so I started with friends, people who know me, people who appreciate me, people will be able to understand me. Some of them already knew that I'd lost my job. So it becomes very easy to let them buy into my business idea because they'll be knowing probably this is someone that we need to support in one way or the other. So it wasn't very easy to pitch my tent, but of course, um, you know, growth is generally a process. There's always a beginning. And I've always said, Joy, in this life, we all must accept to climb the ladder of life right from the bottom. The only person that does something from the top and finishes from the bottom is a grave digger. When you're digging the grave, where do you start from? The top, and you finish from the bottom. But all of us, we must be able to know that nothing's come, nothing comes on a silver plate. And so we must accept climbing the ladder of life and success from the bottom. That is, thank God I knew that. And so many times things didn't look like they were working for me, but I kept on doing it. And I think again, that is where consistency comes in. Consistency pace. Keep doing what you're doing in a very small way. It may not be significant. People may not feel it at the beginning. People may not feel your influence, but the more you do it, the, because when people see consistency in you, they know this guy is serious. But when you do something tomorrow, after a month, you don't even remember how you did it, you know, and you get into other things, then you want to repeat what you did after six months, People see you as a very confused element. And so uh, there is power in consistency. I want to encourage anyone who is listening to us this morning, anyone who is hearing me talk, whatever it is that you're doing, especially those of you that have lost your jobs. You know, we are living at a very critical uh, time in history. Uh, those of you that are of my age and below, I'm sure you've never experienced this before. And again, we never prepared for it. Joy, no one saw this corona thing come. We never prepared for it. And so uh, we, 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 we need to 
find a way to adapt because from the look of things, George, this thing is not going anytime soon. Of course, we are praying and we are trusting God to see it get lifted. But it, it, it looks like it's going to be with us for some time. And so adaptation is very key. We need to adapt and in the adaptation process, whatever our hands find to do, let's be consistent. That's how you build a brand. Joy, I must say that I still have a very long way to go. I'm not there yet. But you know what? I'm grateful to God that I'm not where I was yesterday. I may not be where I wanted to be, but at least I'm not where I was.